Do you love tea? I do. So I went to Sri Lanka for a cuppa. I had cuppas in the low, mid and high countries. And in fact, I even attended the Dilma School of Tea. But Sri Lanka isn't just tea. It's also UNESCO World Heritage Sites. Beautiful beaches, abundant wildlife, amazing food, rubies, sapphires, toddy tappers, temples and tuk-tuks. <laughs> and I love tuk-tuks. So I rented one to explore this beautiful multicultural pearl in the Indian Ocean. Hi, my name is Scott Wilson, nomadic bull. And this time I'm visiting Sri Lanka. It's quite novel. Let's have a closer look, shall we? This thing is an absolute hoot. I love it. Good morning. Another beautiful day in Sri Lanka. I'm just north of Nagombo on the west coast. And I'm heading to Rockland Distillery, makers of fine traditional Sri Lankan Iraq. And uh, in case you didn't know, Iraq comes from the coconut flower. So we're going to have a look inside the factory, meet some toddy tappers, and check out the goods. Here we go. Yeah, thank you very much. Okay, what's your name? I'm Kastian. Kastian? Okay, so you work here many years? No, for four years I've been working here. Four years you've been working here. Okay, and this, you drink Iraq? No, no. When I go home for a party, when you have... When you go home, yeah. <laughs> okay. Doesn't drink at work. I like it. You can uh, drink. Yes, these are my wheels. This is my tuk tuk. Uh huh. All right, here we are at the Rockland Estates. And we're here today with uh, a couple of the managers, and we're going to check out the, uh, the toddy tapping process. Uh, and the, the toddy tapping is from uh, the coconut flour. And this is to produce uh, a traditional Sri Lankan uh, alcohol called Rak. Okay, and so here we are with a couple of the managers. I'm going to show you, and then we're going to walk through the premises, and uh, we're going to show you how it's done. All right, so here we are. So today, and we're with uh, Mr. Bandera. Yeah, I'm Bandera. Okay, and you are the manager of the estate here. Yeah. Distillery manager. The distillery manager. Yes. And we're uh, just north of Nagombo yeah. on the west coast. That's right, yes. Okay. And over here in the left corner, we have Manoj? Manoj, yeah. Okay. And you came this morning from Colombo? That's right, from Colombo. I'm the brand development manager for Auckland. The brand development manager? Yeah. Okay. I can't buy in Canada. What's going on? She liked that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm the she liked the blood. Okay, so are uh, we going to get it to Canada? Yeah, for sure. Yeah? yeah. Well, maybe I can help. That's fine. But hang on a second here. We're getting ahead of ourselves. Before heading into the distillery, we need to see where the main ingredient comes from. Now every country has a drink. The Scottish have their single malt. The Irish have their Guinness. And us Canadians, well, we have our rye and we have our beer. Now, Sri Lanka's drink of choice is tea. And we've already covered that in detail. But on the alcoholic side, they have a rack. And it comes from here. The coconut. Well, actually not the coconut itself, but the juice. Or toddy from the coconut flower. Now coconut trees don't bloom all at once. Instead, different flowers in the coconut tree flower at different times of the year. That way, on most coconut trees, there is a continual cycle of coconuts growing to maturity. And while these coconuts come to maturity, the tree sends up nutrients in the form of sap to spur growth. This is where the toddy tappers come in. 
to harvest the sap, or toddy as it's called. The toddy tappers scale coconut trees using steps of old coconut husks bound to a tree at regular intervals. The tapper climbs the tree and binds the flower before it has a chance to bloom. You can see a bound flower here in this shot, with a cheeky parrot having a morning snack. By binding the flower, the tree is tricked into thinking the flower is in bloom and sends nutrients to it. But instead of feeding the ripening coconuts as intended, the toddy is collected on a daily basis by the toddy tappers in clay pots and sent to the distillery, where the distillation process begins. And I was fortunate that the folks at Rockland were going to walk me through the process. And Bandera took me down to some of their trees at a picturesque location next to a beautiful beach, where a toddy tapper was getting ready to tap. So, uh, what is your name? Nama, Nama Sugat, Sugat. Sugat. Sugat? Yes. Yeah? Okay, and, and how long has he been a uh, toddy tapper? I don't know if he's a toddy tapper. No, no. He's a toddy tapper. No, no. He's a toddy tapper. He's a toddy tapper. He's a toddy tapper. He's been 27 years. Get out! <laughs> he's only 30, 35. <laughs> Why is he here? 42, yes. 42? And he's been tapping 25? 27. Yeah. 27, 40. Oh my god. So every, every flower having the clay pots. Yeah. Oh, every flower has a you little clay can, pot. Yes, you can see. Clay oh, pot. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. They, they collected the toddies, pour, pour into this one. Yeah. And after fill this, yeah. they have to unload. Okay. This is the one of unloading place. So this is, okay, and then these are his toddy tapping tools? Yes, yes. This, this is the hammer, wooden that, hammer. This is specially uh, making from the tamarind tree, you know. Well, that's, that's heavy, eh? Yes, yes. Heavy and very strong, the high density. Yeah. <laughs> you know, okay. tamarind tree. Tamarind tree, no, yeah. okay. So, all right, and he uses that for what? Yeah. You Tap hammer the, the hammer the flower. Okay, and then the other one is what? This is a oh, jeez, look at that. So that's to cut the flower. Yes, the special knife. Oh man, that is sharp. After our introduction, the toddy tapper got down to work. Now I've seen quite a few things in my travels, but watching the toddy tapper go from tree to tree and collect the toddy fascinated me. I've done my fair share of unusual things in my life, but this was one that had never crossed my mind. I don't think... <laughs> no, let me correct myself. There is no way I would ever have the courage to do what this man was doing. The fact that I weigh 240 pounds and gravity works against me is beside the point. Yet here he was walking from tree to tree as though on the way to the corner store. Tap, 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 cut, 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 then on to the next tree. Collect the toddy, send it down, then more tapping, more cutting, more toddy. I was entranced. I gotta watch them all day. But he finally tapped all the trees in the area. And just so you know, he'll tap up to a hundred a day. But he was done here, until tomorrow. So he made his way back down to us. It was time to taste some toddy. Okay, good toddy. 
Good toddy. Okay, so and here's to the here's to the toddy tapper. All right. So the toddy is collected on a daily basis and brought to the still in containers where it is offloaded and emptied into stainless steel holding containers. From there, a sample is taken for testing to make sure the toddy is good. And once the OK is given, then plugs are opened and the toddy empties into a larger tank from where it is pumped into giant storage tanks in the toddy room. From there, it makes its way into the still. What are we looking at here? This is uh, the, uh, the di distillation column. The dist uh, distillation yeah, column. column. Yeah, okay. This is used to distill our toddy. Yeah. The, we use the steam for the uh, warm up process. Yeah. Uh, the, for that, we are using the boiler. Yeah. Uh, then we have to feed into the toddy to the distillation column. And then there's a uh, some there's a mechanism and number of plates and that depend on our strength. On an interesting side note, the Rockland Distillery is working with the environment. Water used during the distillation process is recycled and used again, and the byproducts are fed to the back of the property and treated in a complex series of tanks before being released into an eco pond. Every effort is made to make the entire process eco-friendly. That room. But back to the still. Once the toddy is distilled, it is fed to the vat room where government agents check quality and quantity before the liquor is sent to another giant plant where it is matured in these works of art. Giant Helmilla vats. All right, so for scale, here we are, I'm just under six feet tall. This is one of the small ones, so it's big. Oh, I see, wow. Oh, look at that. Look at all those. Okay, now they look small from up here, but I'm sitting on top of a 10,000 liter keg. And the ones behind me actually are even bigger. They're almost twice the size. Look at that, those are 20,000. And you can see they disappear behind me. And these are all made in Sri Lanka by Coopers, Sri Lankan wood, transported here to Rockland where they live out their lives maturing a rack. Beautiful. One last look. These chaps here are worried about me falling. Oh man. Man. <laughs> that, that's got some punch. And after maturation, it's off to Bobby. So, from the toddy tappers to the still, the still to the giant Helmilla vats, the vats to bottling and packaging, and then on to the final stage of the process, consumption. That's where I come in. My time was just about done, and for my last couple of days in Sri Lanka, I wandered around the present day capital of Colombo to buy some souvenirs, and have a last cup of tea at Tea Avenue. A cup of tea with a different twist, milk tea.
A traditional drink for workers in the old days who couldn't afford the time for a traditional cuppa to cool before drinking. A traditional Sri Lankan milk tea. All right, and look at that. I see what you mean the way it uh, froths up. Isn't that something? Milk tea. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. Cheers. After my cuppa, it was off down to the waterfront. It was Christmas in Colombo, and the city was in a festive mood. I walked the waterfront and made my way over to the famous Gall Face Hotel for a bit of nostalgia. It was a fitting end to the almost six weeks I'd had in Sri Lanka. Well, my time in Sri Lanka is coming to an end. My five weeks are almost up. And what a glorious five weeks they've been. You know, Sri Lanka may not be a huge country in, in geographical terms, but it has a massive cultural heart. You know, when you take all the religions and you, and you, and you bring them together and you have this tapestry uh, that is so rich and vibrant and, and, and open and welcoming that you can't help but become immersed in it. You add to that the people that, that to me, are some of the most friendliest, welcoming people I've ever had the good fortune of meeting on my travels. And it makes for a fantastic... Uh, fantastic uh, holiday destination. When you add to that beaches like this, uh, uh, tea estates in the upcountry where you can go see tea pluckers in action or you know you can go check out one of these coconut plantations and watch the toddy tappers tap the toddy. It, 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 Sri Lanka just offers so much to see and do. It's, it's, it's an amazing place. An amazing place. You know, so would I come back? Absolutely. I'd come back in a heartbeat. I love the weather, love the folks. I love the visual splendors, the food. Uh, but most importantly, the culture. It's, it's just such a beautiful place that I, I would recommend Sri Lanka in a heartbeat. Absolutely love it. And this is Scott Wilson in Sri Lanka. See you next time. And in signing off, I'd just like to thank all those that had helped me in making this trip as enjoyable and enlightening as it had been. I'd like to start off with the Dilma Tea Company. When I'd sent out my original inquiries from Canada, they had been one of the first to reply to offer assistance. The week I spent with them was incredible, as they not only enrolled me in their school of tea, but went out of their way to show me other sides of Sri Lanka. For that, I'd like to thank you very much, Dilma. How are you? Very good morning. <laughs> this is actually, to be very honest with you, the old Dutch asylum of the sixth going asylum? back to the 16th century. Oh, for God's sake. I was wondering if I could have something a bit different. Sure. And I was looking at one of those tea shots. Sure. Uh, you know the one with the, sh is it a Chivas? Chivas, we got it. Yeah. Can I try one of those? Yes. Thank you. Oh, so those are the ears. Yeah, <laughs> okay.
Uh, but what was your what was your name? Here we go. Come on. Here we go. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Then there was the good doctor at Galaboda. Dr. Nalan Sanjua had given up practicing medicine in England to return home to his native Sri Lanka to carry on the family business. No pressure there, right? Eh? No pressure there. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Three generations the business had been run by his family and from my time there, he had welcomed me as though I was part of that same family. What a humbling experience. Thank you very much, doctor. <laughs> yeah, no, and and he's got the brawly. Yeah. Is this an English thing? It is an umbrella. Yeah, so that's for the sun or sun the rain? And or? rain. Yeah. Okay. You have to get the protection. And how about the folks at Rockland that provided a fascinating look inside the Iraq industry that included the visit with the toddy tapper, the distillery, and the bottling plant. Definitely a very cool excursion. Thank you very much, Rockland. We have camera shy. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. And then there were the folks at Jet Wing Hotels. They had provided accommodation around the country, both in hotels and in beautifully converted villas. Their attention to detail and commitment to progressive ecological solutions within the industry was incredible. But then again, they were a family-run business, so there was definitely a personal touch. Thank you very much, Jeb Wing. I'd like to thank uh, Vendetta uh, for our stay here, because it's been absolutely incredible. It's a beautiful, beautiful hotel. And uh, the restaurant, the staff, super friendly. And um, thank you very, very much. Yeah, Appreciate it. Thank you, yeah, thank you. Cheers, guys. <laughs> thank you very much. All right. Thank you. And lastly, I'd like to thank all those I met along the way that greeted me with a smile and shared a part of their world. And what a world it was. Thank you very, very much. Superman. I didn't realize that was a flavored tea. You I didn't thought know that. that no, I didn't know that. <laughs> I thought that was a red, just like an orange. Order it again. Yeah, definitely. All right, well, thank you very much. Thank you very much. So, looking forward to see you again. Yes. Well, hey, there we go. This gentleman's got his umbrella <laughs> for me. <laughs> and the best rubber? Yeah, you see. Yeah. <laughs> tea, rubber, and coconut were our main export. Okay. Yeah. Oh, man.
Canada. America. Yeah. Very far. <laughs> You're very good. Why is it that whenever we feel the need to go somewhere exotic, we get on a plane and leave? What's wrong with our own backyard? What's wrong with Vancouver Island? Well, as it turns out, nothing at all. He wasn't sure, for sure, that it was in fact an island. Vancouver Island is as exotic as it gets, but it's a different kind of exotic. It's not palm trees and margaritas. It's giant cedars and single malt. It's a pristine and wild exotic. Hi, my name is Scott Wilson, AKA the Nomadic Bull. Join me and my good buddy, Dominic Madlinski, the Zen guy, as we explore our island. We'll head up north and meet Joey and learn about Coal Harbor. We'll take in a potlatch in Alert Bay and we'll ride the rails in Port Alberni. And maybe we'll just have a tipple or two. We'll meet great locals, hear fascinating stories, ride through stunning scenery, and wallow in a beautiful wilderness setting. Vancouver Island is a gem, our gem, and it's time to share it. This is Changing Landscapes Vancouver Island. So here's the nomadic bull and the sand and, and the acting base commander with CMB is today. The museum is open to the public Monday through Friday, 10 till 3.30. And admission is by donation, well worth it. Go and check it out.